What is up everyone, James back here, welcome back to another episode of VGC 17 Backtrack Battles. We are using Wolfie Glick's 2017 Melbourne International team for one last time on the channel. And then we're switching to a brand new team, which I'm kind of excited for, but I don't think it's the most solid build team, but it should be a really fun team. But, we have our Porygon 2, Arcanine, Nihiligo, Tapabulu, Muk, and Hariyama. Let's get started. Now, I want to ask everyone because I it just randomly happened to me so this morning I was like walking on my way to school and then what happened was I want to listen to some music but I didn't feel like listening to all my regular playlists that I had so I ended up listening to some of the anime Pokemon theme songs it like the full versions of most of them because like it takes 45 minutes for me to walk to school and yeah, it was just about the same amount of time. So I really enjoyed listening to the Pokemon theme songs because it just brought back so many memories. And I forgot how good some of them were because I loved a lot of the Pokemon anime theme songs. It, what is your favorite Pokemon anime theme song? Because to me, there are a lot of good ones and I feel like I actually don't have a favorite one. Uh, of course, there's the original Gotta Catch Them All, which was, you know... Like, you have to know that one. It's like a classic Pokemon memory. But there's also, um, I loved Johto because I loved Master Quest. Master Quest was such a good one, in my opinion. There was, let me see, there was We Will Be Heroes from uh, Sinnoh, which I loved that one, by the way. Alessio from Italy from, well, Alessio from Italy with a 1517 rating will be our first opponent today. But yeah, I mean, Master Quest, we will be heroes. There was a Hoenn one, but I can't remember the name of it. I think it was Advanced Battle? I don't know, like, I get a lot of the Hoenn ones mixed up. For, uh, I also liked the, um, the X and Y, the remix of Gotta Catch Em All. That was a good one, too. So... Okay, let's get back to Pokemon, actual VGC here. So we got Muk, Arcanine, Garchomp, Tapu Lele, Tapu Fini, and Kartana. Very standard team. I wonder how I want to play around this. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah, it's standard. Um, how do I want to play against this? Because my Nihiligo looks so well in this matchup if it wasn't for Kartana. Most likely Scarf Lele, I would assume. But yeah, Muk is an annoying Pokemon for this team to handle. I think I want to lead Porygon to Muk since it's a very solid lead against my opponent's team, I want to say. Hariyama doesn't do too much, in my opinion, because of Tapu Lele. Tapu Bulu is alright for the Tapu Fini, and I think Arcanine in the back. Because I want to intimidate. Kartana could also be an issue. So I think these four Pokemon are the most solid options. Kind of wanted to bring Nihiligo, not going to lie. I think the Grassy Seed would have helped a lot in this match. But I feel like this is a very safe game plan. Because Muk, if I imprison my opponent's Muk, we are in a really great shape. But the problem here is knocking off my Violet. Because I could see Garchomp Muk being my opponent's lead. And threatening my Muk as well as threatening the, K the knockoff onto my Porygon 2 would be annoying. But we're going to see Kartana top of Lele. And... Hmm, I don't know if this is good or bad for me because I do like the position here decently. However, it's not exactly the best position. We get special attack rise, but the Kartana plus the top of the lead is threatening some massive damage. I don't know if it's worth... We never risk Porygon 2 here. Well, I guess we could. Um, I could go into Arcanine, but I really don't want to take a Psychic plus Sacred Sword. I guess going out into Tapu Bulu wouldn't be bad, but we would be powering up the Kartana, so... Kind of lost on what to do here. I think going out into Arcanine is safe, as well as going for Poison Jab. There's a chance my opponent has a... A Taunt on Tapu Lele, but we're going to see the Tapu Lele switch out uh, into Garchomp, so that's kind of annoying. But that's not too bad for me, actually, because right here, yeah, I thought that was a possibility too, but I should have went for, with my gut and just went for the Trick Room. But it's not bad here, because most likely Kartana's not going to be able to do much damage. Most likely targeted the Porygon 2 slot with a Sacred Sword, as, yep, it's going to be a Sacred Sword into the Arcanine. So we're not going to be taking too much, because it's at minus 1. We get a Poison Jab off onto the Garchomp, which is pretty nice. Just chip, because that puts it in range of Ice Beam from... 
Porygon 2 if we don't get the special attack boost. But what I'll do here, because I'm worried about what my opponent's going to do, I'm just going to protect Arcanine and bring up my Porygon 2. Very safe play. If I can get Trick Room up, I feel very good about my position, because my opponent doesn't really have good answers to Trick Room. Other than Muck, I guess. Because Muck could be an annoying Pokemon under Trick Room. But if I can get my Muck in with Porygon 2, I can start going for Imprison. My opponent can't protect to stall out the Trick Room. Porygon 2 threatens to knock out on the Garchomp. Muck threatens to knock out on top of the Lele. Arcanine threatens to knock out on Kartana. So I feel like we're in a very solid position to win this game. Both my opponent's Pokemon are minus one. The only problem I see here is my opponent going for Sword Stance being aggressive. But we're actually going to see the Kartana switch out into that Muck. Excellent play by my opponent. But I would assume that would be Curse Muck. But we will get Porygon 2 out here. Which is going to get our download boost, which is going to be our attack. And this is why the poison jab chip damage was important earlier in the game. As we're going to see the tectonic rage, because my opponent wasn't going to go for earthquake. Who is it going to target? I could see either into my muck or into my arcanine, to be honest. I could see arcanine just because of the fact that my opponent does have kartana. And arcanine's a huge threat to kartana. But I could see either, because muck is a pretty threatening Pokemon, but... Yeah, it's going to be into my Muck slot. Probably trying to get rid of it. Trying for like a setup. But yeah, Porygon 2 easily going to be able to take that minus 1 Tectonic Rage. And I could see Garchomp Eater going for Protect, Sword Stance, Sub. Or maybe switching out back into Kartana. But the best play here for me is to go into Tapu Bulu. And I think I want to Trick Room here. Because I feel like my opponent goes for Protect Knockoff potentially. Or just brings out the Kartana. And either way, I feel like we're good. I want to save Arcanine because the Kartana can be annoying. So I will bring out my own Muck here. As we're going to see the Poison Jab actually. And it's going to target on Porygon 2. We should survive that. Yes. And the knockoff is going to go into the Porygon 2. And we took quite a bit of damage. However, we do get our Trick Room up, which is great. The problem is... Well, does Garchomp can freely go for Earthquake? So... My best play here is to go for Imprison here with Muck. And I can't switch in safely. Do I let Porygon 2 go down this turn? It's already got Trick Room up and I don't need Porygon 2 for the rest of the game. We already revealed three of my opponent's mons. No, we actually revealed all four. And Porygon 2 is not really good offensively unless it's a Garchomp. So I guess I'll go for a... Ice Beam here into the Garchomp slot and just Imprison. There's a chance my Muck could be slower, but I kind of doubt it because I do have a decent amount of speed investment. I'm going to go for Imprison here because if my opponent wants to Earthquake, yeah. Because we're just going to see a Protect here, and that's kind of understandable. And the Knockoff actually is going to go out into the Porygon 2 slot. Probably just in case I try to switch, but I actually don't mind that because now I get the Imprison off. My opponent's Muck is basically useless on the field, so now... I could go out into Tapu Bulu, I think. And I think I could get a free substitute up. Luckily, what this Imprison does also allows my team to do really well against my opponent's team. Because now Garchomp can't go for Poison Jab onto my Tapu Bulu. So Tapu Bulu is very safe here. I do have to get rid of that Kartan in the back though. So I think I'm going to get some board position by going for Knockoff here. Onto the Garchomp. And... I could Bloom Doom. I could also Horn Leech. I could sub here. Because Earthquake's not going to do much. We already saw my opponent use the Z-Move. So I feel like Garchomp would switch out into Baby Kartana. So I'm actually going to go hard into my Arcanine here. Because I don't expect Garchomp to stay in. And if it does, Earthquake's not going to do much to my team. I guess what I could see is Garchomp potentially going for like a Swords Dance or Earthquake. And Muck switching to Kartana potentially. But either way, I expect the Kartana to come in to be honest. So, going to be... Well, we are wasting Trick Room turns, but we are getting board positioning. So we're going to see Muck withdraw, and that is going to be a top of Lele, actually, which is interesting. Um, maybe my opponent is going for Earthquake then. I could have bloomed him. Or maybe it's a double switch. We are going to get Tapu Bula out of here and go out into my Arcanine, which, you know, is a fair play. I do get the Intimidate off onto the Garchomp once again, so it's a minus two. So the Earthquake won't be doing too much. To my side of the field, if it does decide to stay in. But yeah, Garchomp's going to switch out, which I kind of assumed. Kartana going to be coming out. And I get to knock off this Kartana and see what kind of item it carries. It's going to be 
I wonder what it's going to be. It's going to be the Focus Ash, so very solid positioning here because I dredged him both knockouts onto my opponent's Pokemon. And yeah, I think I'm just going to Poison Jab the Tapu Lele slot. And I, since my opponent can't protect, this is the best part. My opponent has to keep switching in order to get some decent momentum. I'm going to go for... I think I'm just going to hard switch back into Tapu Bulu, to be honest. Because I don't see Kartana doing much right now because of my Arcanine that's on the field. So I'm going to go for a switch out into my Tapu Bulu once again. Because I kind of expect my double my opponent to go back into maybe sacking Muck as a pivot or going into Guard Chomp once again. So I'm going to bring out... Oh, wow. My opponent actually stays in with both. Not what I was expecting, but I do get the Poison Jab off onto Tapu Lele, which... That's a lot less than I thought. That's a bulky Tapu Lele. Psychic going to come out into Tapu Bulu. That does so much damage. It's a life orb. It's a bulky life orb variant. That's why. Smart Strike into my Muck slot. Okay, if that was into Tapu Bulu, I was going to freak out. Uh, gets a crit, which is kind of annoying. Uh, that crit is kind of annoying. Okay. I still don't think we're in a terrible position though, but I need to keep Muck alive because if Muck is alive, then I easily can win this game. But we did take a lot of damage. Hmm. How many turns of Trick Room are left? One. So maybe I double into Kartana and hope I can pick up the knockout. Uh, do it. But I would probably be sacking Bulu if I did that. Maybe I go for Poison Jab here. Or I can knock off the Tapu Lele. I think I'm going to go for a knock off into Tapu Lele and Protect here. Yeah. Because I want Tapu Bulu to be healthy to take on the Garchomp. Kartana is not much of a threat now. I wonder... Okay, we're going to see Tapu Lele withdraw into Garchomp. Actually, I would have not done that play if I was my opponent. Because I could have leached, Horn Leached potentially. We're going to see the Muck come in, and I'm not sure my opponent realizes, but you can't go for um, Poison Jab or Knock Off, because I'm still on the field of Muck, and he's still in prison. So, Knock Off into the Garchomp, which activates Rough Skin. Huh, I wonder what my opponent's playing for as the end game here, because I'm not really seeing what my opponent's really trying to do with the end game. Unless my opponent's Fire Fang, but Fire Fang shouldn't knock out Tapu Bulu at this range. Maybe my opponent has something like... Fire Fang? Because, yeah, we have Terrain up. I can go for a knockoff, and I think I'm going to go Horn Leech the Garchomp slot because I want some health back with Tapu Bulu. My opponent can't protect either with Muck, so we could see a switch out maybe into Gartana. But my opponent can't protect, which is so good about Imprisoned Muck. You can't protect at all when I on the field. So my opponent has to try to get rid of Muck, but there's no one hit that Garchomp can go for that can knock out Muck because of the grassy terrain so that's huge and also my opponent can't protect to stall out turns or anything so we're gonna see shadow sneak come out from the top of from the muck onto top of bulu i'm guessing fire fang then is fire fang i don't think this will pick up the knockout well i'd guess wrong okay so top of bulu goes down again knock off into the guard shop yeah, that was actually pretty bad. That was pretty bad. I can go on to my Arcanine now, but... Okay, this Garchomp's going to be a minus one. Hmm. I wonder if Muck can still lift the Earthquake at minus one. Hmm. Well, it is grassy terrain still. I forgot we still have grassy terrain, but uh, my opponent can easily switch on to Tapu Lele, I think. So I'm going to Flare Blitz knock off the Garchomp slot. It seems weird, but it's my only chance to win because I have to hope that my opponent either goes for Shadow Snake Earthquake for some reason or goes for a switch into Tapu Lele and both my Pokemon are able to survive the attack because that's the only way I can currently win this situation. Because I need to knock out Garchomp because Garchomp is ASP. If my opponent's smart, he saves Garchomp. Maybe goes into Tapu Lele himself. That would be the best play possible for my opponent. Yeah, I think that would be the best play possible for my opponent. I think my opponent should make that. But my opponent goes aggressive here. Oh, which looks like my opponent did. Shall sneak into Muck. And I'm guessing an Earthquake. Yeah. 
Not sure if that's the play though. That's minus one and grassy terrain. We're gonna survive that pretty easily. Yeah, with both Pokemon. I can get a Flare Blitz off, and this will target down the Garchomp slot. Yeah, Flare Blitz plus Knockoff will get rid of the Garchomp. And maybe put me in range of my Berry? Yeah, sure. Yeah. That's in range of my Berry. Excellent. So now I have my Berry back, so Arcanine now might be able to survive some hits from my opponent. So I will go for a Knockoff here into the Garchomp, which will pick up the Knockout. Okay, so Garchomp goes down. My Muck, however, is extremely low. My muck is extremely low. However, Arcanine's pretty healthy, so I don't know what my opponent wants to do. Top of the lead is most likely coming out, because you want to prevent the grassy terrain recovery as possible, right? Hmm. I guess it comes down to speeds, because I guess it comes down to my opponent's top of the lele speed and my Arcanine's speed. It was such a bulky lele, though, because it took the poison jab a lot better than I was expecting, so I think it has to be really physically defensive. And with the life orb, I guess that makes up for a special attack. So I don't think it has much speed investment. At least that's my judgment. And if it does have investment, I actually think it targets down the muck here. Because if you get rid of muck here. Because let's say I protect Arcanine and Poison Jab the Tapu Lele, you Psychic, and Chow Sneak into the Arcanine. You lose the game because Kartana can't beat both my Pokemon alone. So yeah, I'm going to go for a Protect and a Flare Blitz because it seems like my safest play. Luckily, my opponent can't protect to stall out or play some mind games with me. So, if I can get rid of the Sapo Lele, I do win the game. We're going to see Muck withdraw, actually, into the Kartana. I'm not sure how I feel about that play. Well, actually, no. I actually think... Mm, I don't know. It's questionable. We are going to get the Flare Blitz off, and it will target down the Sapo Lele. So, Sapo Lele does go down. If I went for a knockoff there, that would have been amazing. I should have probably went for it. Uh, I should have went for knockoff. Because if I sh if I went with my gut reaction, yeah, that was the best play possible. Muck is going to come out. I think the game comes down to double protect. Yeah, I need a double. I think I need a double. So I'm going to protect Muck and go for Flare Blitz. If my opponent messes up, you Sacred Sword to Arcanine. Yeah, as we fail, Shadow Snake's gonna come out, but yeah, Psychic Terrain, Sacred Sword, into... Oh, it is the Arcanine. I think that cost my opponent the game. Here comes the Flare Blitz. I think the Recoil, we should barely survive it. Actually, I'm not sure. Let me see. It might be just enough. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, my opponent can't go for Shadow Snakes here, and cannot go for Poison Jab or Knock Off, so I'll... Unless my opponent has Gunk Shot, but I feel like my opponent would, would have went for Gunk Shot a lot earlier in the game. I'm gonna go for Knock Off and Helping Hand. I don't want to uh, knock out my own Arcanine while my opponent can't even attack here. So my best play is just to have Muck do the damage until the Psychic Terrain wears off. And then I can go for a Last Ditch Extreme Speed. So here we go. Knock Off into the Muck. Get rid of his Berry. Yes. And then we go for a Helping Hand Poison Jab. Like, I could go for Flare Bliss right now, but I don't want to risk, like, the worst... Well, actually, no. This game should be over, because Muck can't do anything. Yeah, the match is going to be forfeit anyway, which I kind of assumed. That was a lot closer than I was expecting. I feel like my opponent definitely would have auto-won that game. I had to go off a choke there. You should have saved Garchomp, just sack your Tapu Lele, and then Garchomp could have cleaned up, to be honest. I feel like that was the best potential play for my opponent, but... My opponent instead just went straight for the earthquake, trying to go for the offense, but that gave me a room of opportunity. So, yeah, we got actually pretty lucky there. I thought I was going to lose to 15-17, and the points would have dropped tremendously, like tremendously. And we got like two points from that battle. Uh, it's kind of interesting, though, how battle spot pairs up sometimes, because I feel like... It depends like I think that battle spot how it works is two trainers are paired firstly based on like if there's actually searching for one and then the second tier is like rating wise but I feel like if there's no one online with the same rating or close to the same rating you're just gonna find whoever so yeah thankfully 
<laughs> we didn't actually lose that. <laughs> that would have been kind of frustrating for me. That would have been a bad way to start off the episode. But, yeah, that was a pretty long game, though. That was, what, 18 minutes? Jeez. But then again, this team does take a while to play. And speaking of theme songs, like I was talking about earlier, as we find our next opponent with a Kartana, Snorlax, Tapu Fini, Tapu Koko, Arcanine, and Persian. This looks like the team that Marcus ran and uh, Sebas, or Sebas, I don't know how you pronounce his name. Uh, very, very annoying to play. However, we do have Hariyama, which is pretty good against my opponent's team. So I don't think my opponent leads Snorlax right away. I think the best play is Nihil Eagle, Hariyama, Arcanine, Muck? I could see Muck or Tapu Bulu. I kind of like Tapu Bulu to be honest. Because Porygon 2 doesn't do much in the matchup other than getting Trick Room up. And the Snorlax is like the one thing that's stopping me from preventing Trick Room. Well, getting up Trick Room. And Muck does well against the Tapus, but does pretty poorly against everything else. So I'll go with these four. Uh, but as I was saying about theme songs, like, I don't know, there were a lot of good ones. There were a lot of, uh, not gonna lie, there were a lot, there were a few bad ones. I wasn't exactly a huge fan of the first Unova one, and the Orange Islands one was kind of interesting. I uh, wasn't a huge fan of those two, but I loved a lot of the theme songs. So let me know what your favorite of the theme songs are, and... Especially if you heard the main ones, because the main ones are really good. I like the main ones. But let's see how this is going to go. Hopefully we can win. This might be the last battle with the team, because I feel like this might be a long one. Snorlax is always a long one, but we do have Hariyama, which is fortunate. Kartana is going to be annoying, though. If my opponent leads Kartana plus the Persian, that's a very annoying lead. And I definitely could see my opponent leading that. Yep, it's Persian Kartana. Okay. So I lead Nihiligo plus the... <sighs> I lead Nihiligo plus my Hariyama here. My opponent 1761, yes. Um, I feel like my opponent doubles into Hariyama because Hariyama is a big threat to my opponent's team. But Nihiligo is also a big threat to my opponent's team. Ah, what do I want to do? I don't want to sack my Nihiligo, but I do want to make the read of switching Hariyama into Arcanine, predicting like a Leaf Blade double target. But the best play, I think, is just to go into Arcanine. I should have just let Arcanine. I knew my gut was going to... I was just worried about a Tapu, like Tapu Koko, to be honest. And I'm going to go for close combat into the Kartana slot, because Persh is not really a threat. It can parting shot, but it can't do damage with foul play onto my Hariyama, so... Let's see. I can see my opponent also going for a double target smart strike foul play into my Nihiligo. Although that's kind of unlikely. We're going to see the fake out shit target down to Hariyama. Yep. And then what are we going to see with the Kartana? It's going to be smart strike. And it's going to target down the Nihiligo. So I did make the right call there. Okay. I honestly thought my opponent would have doubled into Hariyama. And to be honest, I think that would have been the move I would have done. But we get a good call. I think my opponent should be wary about feint. So I could see Kartana switching out into Feeny, because I could definitely see Feeny in the back. I actually want to Flare Blitz the Persian, because I really want to make reads now, because you really should be worried about Feint. Like, I have the option to Feint here. So, and I could definitely see Parting Shot here. Hmm. The question is... Okay, so Kartana could protect... No, I don't think Kartana should protect. I think it should 100% switch out into the Feeny. Yes, Kartana switches out. Into Arcanine, actually. Okay. Uh, I kind of got a close combat out. That's more powerful. But I don't waste my defenses. So I guess this is an alright situation. That means we see Arcanine and then Parting Shot or Foul Play. It is going to be Parting Shot. So what's my opponent going for? I'm guessing Feeny on that slot. I can definitely see that. So let's see what my opponent goes for. If it's Feeny in that slot, I knew I should have poisoned him to Persian. But I thought he would try to go into Kartan again. It's actually Tapu Koko, which I do not mind too much. Okay. <laughs> Imagine if I poison jab the Persian slot, though. Oh, that would have been great. So, I'm going to get Flare Blitz, though, onto the Tapu Koko, which should put in extreme speed range. Uh, that's a bit of a bulkier Tapu Koko. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, we were intimidated. Never mind. 
I forgot we were intimidated. And there's a the poison jab into the Arcanine. No poison, which, you know, so so. Hindsight 2020. Um. I don't think it was Life Orb Coco. I think it was like Nature's Power. So I don't see a reason not. But I need Arcanine. I do need Arcanine in this matchup. So I think I'm just going to protect my Arcanine here. Do I need Bulu though? Like I really don't need Bulu in this matchup. Hmm. I could Flare Blitz switch into Bulu. Because I don't want to risk Nile Ego. Hmm. I think I'm going to switch out into Nile Ego though. Uh, like I'm worried about if the Arcanine carries Bulldoze. Or my opponent goes for Thunderbolt into Hariyama, which I kind of doubt. So I'm going to switch into Nile Ego here and protect my Arcanine. Because I definitely don't want to lose Arcanine here. We're going to see Tapu Koko protect. Okay. That's good. And we're going to protect with Arcanine. Oh, is this a Bulldoze? I might have walked into a Bulldoze. No, it's just a Flare, but it's okay. Into the... Yeah, into Nile Ego. Okay. That does a lot, though. That really did a lot. Okay. I'm gonna hard switch into my top of blue right here. Do I wanna switch into the top of blue? I don't wanna take a Thunderbolt, which is the reason why. And I think I'm gonna go for a Power Gem. Into the Arcanine, because this top of Coco is in range of an Extreme Speed, I believe. Well, Extreme Speed plus Faint. From my Hariyama, so I don't really have to worry much about the Coco. Like, Arcanine's an annoying Pokemon to switch in because Intimidate's huge. I could see also Coco switching out into Kartana, but that'd be a very risky switch. I think C Coco has to stay in here. Maybe go for Volt Switch. I could definitely see that play. It, I wouldn't really mind if he went for Volt Switch. I could see maybe helping on Thunderbolt if my opponent carries it. I could see Extreme Speed into Thunderbolt. But I'm going to go into Tapu Bulu because maybe I'll be able to live to Extreme Speed plus Thunderbolt if I get rid of the terrain. So, and get the Grassy Seed up. So, let's see what my opponent decides to do. As we get the Grassy Seed up, we're going to see the Volt Switch. Okay. Into the Arcanine. So, maybe I should have just stayed in and went for Flare Blitz. But I didn't want to take all that recoil. And I think my opponent would have switched to Persian if that was the case. We're probably going to see Kartana come back in. I would 100% assume Kartana is coming back in. Yep. And we do get a power gem though, and that will knock out my opponent's Arcanine. So Arcanine goes down, which is great. That's really great because that's one annoying Pokemon that could switch in, intimidate, and that's out of the way. We also heal with the grassy terrain, which is kind of cool. So we didn't really take much damage at all. I think we're in a very solid position here, but the Kartan is going to be annoying to play around. I assume it's... I, no, it was Scarf on my... On the team, right? Tapu Koko is gonna come out, so. Hmm. Tapu Koko, huh? Let's see. If I get a Tapu Koko, that's good for the rest of my team. I think it was Scarf Kartana. Um. I don't know what my opponent does, though. Smart Strike is a potential. I kind of just want to double up into Coco. Yeah, doubling up into Coco seems fine. Because if Kartana gets a Beast Boost and I knock out Coco, then that means that Kartana is most likely locked into a Smart Strike. Yeah, it is Scarf. I did confirm that. Okay, so actually goes for the attack into Tapu Bulu. So Dazzling Gleam or maybe just going for the Thunderbolt. Oh, we're going to see the Z move. Normalium Z, so it's the Z Nature Power. Okay, that, that's a fair play. I just wasn't sure what Z move it was. I thought it was Twinkle Tackle. So it's going to be the Gigavolt Havoc, and that's going to go into Nihiligo, which is okay. Yeah, that's okay. Because my opponent didn't get Beast Boost, which is a huge part. Horn Leech into the Tapu Koko, which will pick up the Knockout. Yes. So now we're in an okay position, but the Persian, like I'm worried about my Arcanine because it does have a lot of attack investment. I'm guessing it would be knocked out by the foul play at this range, so I'm going to have to play extremely safe here. Hmm. 
I could go out into Arcanine and hard switch into Hariyama for the fake out, which I am actually really thinking about. Yeah, actually no, that seems like the best play possible. I was also thinking of sacking my top of Bulu going out into Hariyama because he would have to fake out that turn. But I actually like this play more because one, I get the Intimidate Alphonse Cartana, so it's a minus one smart strike no matter what you, no matter how you look at it. Two, okay, yeah. Best play possible. We already confirmed it's Scarf Cartana. Unless that was a really slow Tapu Koko, but I really doubt that. So I'm going to protect my Arcanine. It doesn't matter if he goes for Faint because he can't really abuse Faint with a Scarf Cartana locked in a Smart Strike. So what I'm going to do is switch on my Tapu Bulu to go out to Hariyama. Because barring a crit. Okay, maybe I shouldn't have risked a crit. Smart Strike. It's actually into the Arcanine. Foul play. Oh, so my opponent doubled up. Okay, I was actually not expecting that because I thought my opponent would try to get the beast boost because foul I guess that's fair because you don't know what kind of Arcanine I was. But now I get the fake out into Persian as well as a Flare Blitz and that will be good game because Cartana can no way knock out both my Pokemon. And I will get to knock out my opponent's only offensive presence really. So we will get the fake out off into the Persian. That does a good amount even though it's Fur Coat. Smart Strike going to come out into the... Hariyama, which does a good amount of damage, Persian flinches, and we get the Flare Blitz off, and now we'll be able to knock out the Kartana, and we already confirmed it's Scarf. Yep, Kartana does go down. And then Persian, did go for foul play, but he can't knock out Hariyama. Because, yeah, Hariyama will be able to survive a foul play pretty easily, get a close combat off, and that would be game. And I don't have to risk anything either, I can just go for close combat plus Flare Blitz. Yeah, that'll be the game. There's no way for my opponent to win. Yep, foul play is gonna come out. Probably trying to knock out. Okay, gonna go for the Hariyama. Yeah, doesn't knock out. Would have needed crit, but even then, even if he got the crit, two flare blitzes should knock out this Persian. Yeah, we get the burn too. Is it a berry though? It's probably a berry. Yeah, it's a berry. But Flare Blitz, two Flare Blitzes, then I have Extreme Speed. And I also have Tapu Bulu in the back, and with the Grassy Terrain healing, my own Arcanine, I could probably just thaw that out anyway. So, that's a good game to my opponent. I definitely feel like I played this one better than the previous episodes. But I hope that everyone enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please leave a like down below. It really shows your support. This was the last episode with the teams. It's kind of strange. I've only done two episodes, really, but this team does take a while to play. And I also want to really get back... To streaming because I'm actually supposed to be streaming in a bit so I want to get this video out make sure it's out and also stream as well because I want to keep the consistency going otherwise yeah hope that everyone enjoyed and I'll see you around in another video